Hello, welcome to Social Media 101, and today we will answer the question, what is social media? And learn three most important aspects of social media platforms. Did you know that everyone spends three hours a day on social media, which means by the age of 80, you will have spent 10 years of your life on social media only. Professor. Yes, Adam? My dad always says, get a life when he sees me on social media. Okay, what did you do then? I'm still waiting for the URL address for life. He hasn't sent me anything yet. No, Adam, you should not wait for a link. You should go outside and enjoy life. That's what your father means. Oh, okay. Oh, what are you doing, Adam? Oh, I'm gonna get a life. No, Adam, you should wait at least until the end of the class. Oh. And you will also learn how to be popular in social media. Yay! Yes, so let's get started. What is social media? Social media is defined as any interactive website that uses the Web 2.0 technology that allows people to create and exchange user-generated content. The two main features that social media sites must have are A. The social graph and B. An activity stream. Social graph is a map that shows how all users are connected to each other. An activity stream is the timeline that shows members' activities such as status updates, posting pictures, videos, and so on. There are three different types of social media based on how much personal information you share about yourself and how interactive the platform is. For example, on Twitter, you can use a nickname and there's low interactivity. But on Metaverse, you should use your real name and there is a very interactive environment. Generally speaking, social media rewards you for selling your privacy. Both on YouTube and Instagram, people subscribe to or follow members who disclose a lot of personal information about themselves and show their faces or their bodies. Professor, you talk about self-information disclosure, but my name on Facebook is anonymous. It's actually nobody. Okay, why is that, Adam? So if someone posts something stupid on Facebook, the update says nobody likes this. Oh, that's brilliant. Can I ask how many friends you have on social media? Um, so far I have nobody. I can understand. How do people use social media? Nowadays, we consume around 7 hours of online content on a daily basis and spend more than 3 hours every day on social media. Each of us has an average of 8 separate social media accounts. More than half a million new users join Facebook every single day. And around 30 million profiles on Facebook are actually dead people who passed away in the past 15 years. What is more, one-third of divorces are now related to Facebook use, and one in six household pets have their own social media accounts. 5% of kids get a social media profile even before they are born. But not all social media platforms are the same. Some are used for workplace communication, some are used as a tool to gather information, some are used only for entertainment purposes. Professor. What happens if we share information about ourselves, not on social media, but in real life? I don't know, Adam, but I would not recommend sharing personal information on social media. Um, I recently a friend of mine started doing this. So basically, he just walks on the street, tells people what he has done on that day, shows people the pictures of his breakfast, and he yells racist stuff at people. And he has four followers. Um, Three cops and one psychiatrist, but he got four followers now. Hmm, that's quite interesting. All right, let's continue. What are the rules of social media? Number one, the 1, 10, and 100 law. In 2006, The Guardian reported that there was a huge gap between the number of views on YouTube and the number of video uploads. There were about 100 million daily views versus 65,000 video uploads a day. Similarly, half of Wikipedia posts were edited by less than 1% of editors. Thus, many researchers believe that in, in online communities, only 1% of the users create content, who are also known as creators, 10% of users actively react to that content, who are known as contributors, and about 90% of us just observe or just swipe through. 
Number 2. The Sturgeon's Law In the 1950s, Theodore Sturgeon suggested that 90% of all published material was actually crap or simply useless. Today, it's also argued that most content we get on social media platforms is noise or just irrelevant messages. At the same time, with the help of machine learning, the noise on our social media accounts can go down in the future. Professor, so if the Sturgeon guy claimed that 90% of our stuff on the timeline is crap, he hasn't seen my timeline yet. Why do you think so, Adam? Because my timeline, I think it's more than 90%. Let's continue. Number 3. The Frictionless Sharing Law This is a concept put together by Mark Zuckerberg. He says people share digital content if it's convenient for the person who shares it and non-intrusive for the person who sees it. You join a digital concert on Fortnite and all of your friends see your activity without you touching a button or doing anything. Number 4. Quantity over Quality In the book of The Cult of the Amateur, Andrew Keen explains that social media favors not the smartest but the loudest voice. For example, a teenage model on Instagram can influence so many more people compared to a professor at Harvard. The social media algorithms favor heavy users, anomalies, controversies, and frequent users, regardless of the authority, credibility, or expertise of these people. Professor, actually I think these Instagrammers, they're very special people. But the only thing is, they tend to spend a lot of time at the supermarket. Do you know why? Why do they do that? Because they wait at the self-checkout counter. <laughs> Adam, actually, this joke is not funny. Do you have another joke? Okay, how about this one? So, what do you call an English teacher who's addicted to social media? An Instagrammer. Adam, to be honest, this was actually worse than before. So, I think you should work on your jokes more. What kind of people use social media? We tend to believe selfish and extroverted people use social media more, but this is not true. While narcissistic and sociable people create more content, they actually spend less time on social media. On the contrary, people who feel lonely and anxious heavily use social media as a form of escape or as a source of emotional support. But the biggest social media use predictor is the fear of missing out, also known as FOMO. The fear of missing out is the belief that others might be having rewarding experiences from which we are absent. FOMO may be the result of low self-esteem, anxiety and loneliness and eventually causes internet and social media addiction. The other two personality factors are gender and age. Generally speaking, females use social media more than males, but this applies mostly to Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. Males, on the other hand, are the heavy users of YouTube, TikTok and Reddit. While three quarters of Pinterest users tend to be female, some researchers claim that 70% of active YouTube users are male. Young people are the most active users of social media on any platform, but young people always want to use a different social media platform from adults. As a matter of fact, both Facebook and Instagram were first adopted by the young generations, but the youngsters left when these platforms were flooded by their parents. The same thing applies to Snapchat and TikTok, both of which were adopted by the young people first and then experienced the fall of the growth rate when different generations started joining. Professor. I think the lady who lives across my building, she thinks I'm her stalker. Why do you think so, Adam? Are you, are you stalking people? She doesn't know me, but she's about to update her Twitter and Facebook right now. If she didn't update her status, how do you know what she's about to do? Uh, because I just hacked her computer. How do people decide which platforms to use? People use social media to interact with friends, socialize with their community members, and also entertain themselves. Their choice may depend on various factors such as peer influence, celebrities, financial incentives, and even romantic dating opportunities. Let's go over these. First, incentives. Recently, it's observed that YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat increased the user content and interaction rates dramatically after introducing their money-making opportunities. TikTok has $1 billion creator fund. Snapchat gives its user $1 million a day, and some YouTube creators make more than $10 million a year. We also know that some popular YouTube channels usually give away money or goods to get high number of views. So, when it comes to social media content, money works. Another factor is dating. This may sound counterintuitive, 
But a quick look at the history of social media shows that the most similar site to Facebook was Friendster, which was designed as a dating site. Many studies show people use sites like Facebook and MySpace for dating purposes and see them essential for online dating. Another factor is celebrities and hype. While some people use social media to become famous, many use it to feel closer to famous people that they like. New social media channels use paid celebrities to attract new users. But if it's not a whole wide range of celebrities, it's not gonna work. For instance, Lady Gaga started her own social network platform called Little Monsters, but it was a failure. The same thing applies to Steve Jobs' push for Apple's ping, which didn't work either. Okay, so you guys have any questions? I do. Uh, yes, Adam. So you must be very interested in the topic. So what's your question? Uh, I want to ask when we're gonna finish this class. Adam, just wait, we're about to finish. Well, can you at least tell me the advantages and disadvantages of social media? Okay, I'll continue with the advantages and disadvantages. Lastly, is social media good or bad? We know that social media causes anxiety, bullying, stereotyping, and political polarization. What is worse, social media creates addiction because our brains always want more and more likes and shares. Some teenagers report having suicidal thoughts caused by social media. Newspapers even claim that the Rohingya genocide in Myanmar was actually caused by fake news on Facebook. But there are also advantages of social media. For example, millions of sick people with terminal diseases get emotional support from the support communities thanks to social media. Young people are more aware of local issues and global affairs because of social media. Social movements such as the Arab Spring and the Climate Action were started and spread on social media. As a matter of fact, I myself conducted a study in 2015 and found that in societies with high social media use, there's less female suicide rates. So, it's true that social media companies violate our privacy. It's true that Facebook makes $200 a year per user by selling our personal data. But if we learn to limit ourselves, social media can actually be used useful for our society and the future generations. All right, that's it for this week. And let's just sum up. Number one, the amount of information you disclose about yourself will influence what kind of social media platform you will choose. And you will keep this more and more information about yourself if you want to get more likes and shares. Number two, young people use social media more than any other age groups. Males and females tend to use different kinds of platforms. And number three, social media has many disadvantages. Also, it has advantages. So we have to think critically and we have to learn how to analyze pros and cons. All right, that's it for this week. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, the class is over. Hey.